Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contour Chemist. All right guys, it's that time again. I finally got the new shade of the month because this was a brand new one and I'm dying to try it. I have not tried it. I did put it in the fridge because it was very melted, but we have the new wallflower. So this is gonna be our inspiration for today's Get Ready With Me. So if you wanna check it out, and of course, all of the comparison swatches. Uh, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And thanks for being here. All right, friends. So I got these bad boys in the mail like a day ago, just in time for me to film. And I have not even swatched it yet. You can tell it's like, it was all melty and I let it sit in the fridge. I did get another one for giveaways, of course, because these bad boys are limited edition while supplies last or the last day of the month of August. This is August. So whatever comes first, just a heads up. This is a semi-gloss, which I'm very excited about because I love the semi-gloss formulation. To me, it's the best of both worlds. And I'm super stoked to try this because my first impression of the color online was that it was Frenchy, but a semi-gloss version. If you don't know, Frenchy is a matte. Um, it's beautiful, but I love me some gloss on my lips and cheeks. So. This is gonna be our inspiration. You guys, my goal today, hold me to it, okay, is to not talk too much and to just do a quick get ready with me um, using that shade, showing you guys some comparison swatches and doing a different kind of eye look. I have an idea and we're going to see if it works. All right, so. Let's get started. Um, I'm just gonna start my makeup as always. I have a fresh set of lashes on, so I don't need to fuse them. I'm just going to prime my eyes. And I do only have my sunscreen, my silicone free sunscreen under my makeup. That is all. Now I'm having a not so bad skin day. I feel like I don't need a medium or full coverage look today. So we're gonna go real light handed. I already have my Perfector already completely prepped and ready to go. Um, and it's drying. No water is left in this bad boy. So it's gonna dry out. It's gonna be perfect by the time I get to it. And I've got my gorgeous Isle palette, guys, ever since this came out. I've been putting all my creams in this. So I, I still have some room. Of course, this bad boy is gonna go in there, right there on top. So for a little comparison, you can see it next to some of the Fruit Punch collection. And Abiza is right here. And I did put my eyeshadows in a separate one. If you guys saw last week's video, I've got my collection in the little guy. I can't help it. I love them, they're beautiful, and I just sit them out on my vanity. So. so my goal is light natural coverage, show my skin a little bit more of a dramatic eye, and using this new wallflower. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna pick up the blend brush since I want very natural coverage, and I'm gonna hit a majority of my face with my darkest shade. So my darkest shade is my color corrector, but if you look at me, my self tan is is pretty strong today. Um, meaning most of my darker areas are darker than my neck. If you can see that, like here on my chin, my entire nose here on my forehead, my rosacea, my hyperpigmentation, my under eyes. Okay. So I'm going to use a really light hand of my mango buffed into those areas so that I have the thinnest layer possible, but that I'm hitting all the dark points. Otherwise, I'm gonna need too much of my main shade for coverage. It's not gonna give me a skin-like finish. I'm gonna to have to apply that shade heavier, which is gonna give me a more makeup-y look, right? So the key is using the smallest amount of your corrector, but hitting all of the darker points. And mm -hmm. that will allow you to use far less product and get 
better coverage that looks like skin, if that makes sense, okay? So I just barely touch for every area, okay? That is all the product I need for my chin. Then I buff it, okay? That's it. Doesn't look like I have a lot of makeup on my face, right? And I'm just gonna repeat that on all of, mostly the high points of my face is where I'm naturally darker and then of course my under eyes. Now my nose is fully darker. So you'll notice I do, I cover my entire nose. Otherwise I won't have good longevity there. And I'm using small circles to really buff it in the skin. So you don't see it sitting on top of the skin at all. Now on areas that are, I maybe don't need as much, but I still have darker areas. I still buff that on, but you don't see the product because I'm not applying a lot of product. I'm just really distributing it well, okay? So the key to that is getting a dense brush. Something like this is not gonna be able to distribute it in the same way. You need density in order to get that buffing motion. Okay, so then once I have a very light hand, then I can press in and I can press on anywhere that might need a little bit extra coverage. That way you're still using the smallest amount you can and you're really controlling the amount you use, okay? So you can see buffed in a little bit and then I can go in and I can press more on that inner corner where I have the most hyperpigmentation so that I get a nice base of coverage under my eyes without a lot of product. If you're using 3D and not Demi, the key is smallest amount and the tools can make all the difference. So whether you can buff it in or on this area that moves more, I am doing more like stippling motions to blend. Since I don't want to move that under eye as much. Okay, so I got my color corrector. You can probably tell it's still a little too dark and warm for me in certain areas. I like to kind of tone it down a little bit and that's where my main shade comes into play. So I'm just gonna flip over the brush. Now this brush is the opposite. This one is dense. This one is very loosely packed, meaning it's going to be more like feather-like, okay? So since I have all this color placed exactly where I need it, I do not want to swipe this brush and use it in this motion like we would for the powder illuminator, which is what it was originally designed for. I want to tap so I'm not moving or buffing or blending in or blending those two colors together. You're gonna get less coverage if you swirl those two colors together. You want to keep the coverage you just got with that color corrector, but then tone it down and lighten it and build up a little bit of coverage just by tapping on your main shade, which is, or should be, more neutral and lighter, okay? So I'm just going to gently press this on 
to even out my skin tone. Then flip back over and then these smaller areas where I need a little bit more coverage and control, I'm going to flip back to that small end and press on. Okay, so remember buffing motion gives you the least amount of product and pressing motion will give you more coverage. Okay going to control exactly where you place it. These creams are very versatile. You can use them in so many different ways and it's all in your control and your preferences. Okay, I'm going to contour real quick with the detail. I'm just going to tap at my angle. And then start up here where it's darkest, go towards the corner of my mouth, stopping about the side of my eye, and I'm literally tapping. And then I'm gonna start moving the brush upwards by still tapping to blend out. That means I'm not gonna be moving any of that color corrector. I already color corrected, so this rosacea is not gonna flare out and make my contour look red and I'm not moving a bunch of product around trying to get it to blend. I'm simply building up coverage with the highlights and the contour since this also gives coverage. So if you have hyperpigmentation or redness in this area, it's all in color choice of contour and how you are applying and blending that can give you the most control. So lately I feel like I've had like a dead spot that contour doesn't want to stick to. It's common. So I'm gonna take the smaller end and a little bit into the contour. And between using that highlight brush and using your contour, you can really control your application, your blending, all the things. Always having a contour brush and a highlight brush that allows you to kind of use it like a little magic eraser, tweak, blend out. These creams blend sometimes too easily, okay? So sometimes that means you blend it all the way to where you can't see. How you blend is sometimes just as important um, as blending itself. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my forehead, but I'm going to push it up into my hairline and down onto my forehead. And since I'm wearing a middle part, usually my forehead looks larger. So sometimes that means I go farther over and farther down than normally to just to make it smaller this way and smaller that way. It's all about fricking the eye. Jawline, down the neck. I'm gonna do a really quick nose with just the finger trick. Cause lately I swear I cannot get my stripes even to save my life. So, touching your fingers. Sometimes the fingers are just the easiest method. Use excess. Under the lip. And there you go. Okay, time to brighten. I'm gonna do very minimal brightening. I'm just gonna use this same brush 
And since I did do a little bit of nose contouring, brightener is where it's at. Otherwise, the nose contour isn't gonna pop in the same way. So I'm just going to go up to that line right there. Since my nose pulls wider, this is what will make my nose look more narrow is by trying to brighten this part right here that's usually shadowed. Again, we're just playing with a little light and dark, right? Okay, same thing goes with eye contours. If you have certain areas of your face that have more shadow, that's where you pop the brightener. That's what's going to trick the eye. You don't have to place them in a certain spot. Everybody's eye is very different. Okay. Down between those stripes. Tap that out and it's time to perfect. I always perfect before blush, okay? And if you're new to our lip and cheeks, you might not realize our lip and cheeks can be anywhere from really bold to really subtle, okay? And if you're putting on a more subtle pigmented, more sheer shade, more sheer formulation, and then you use this to remove excess, the first thing it's gonna do is pick up your blush excess, which sometimes is then gonna lead you, leave you with feeling like you have no blush left, okay? So I always perfect after brightening. So may, I do color correction, main shade, contour, brightener, highlight brightener, and then I perfect. Then I'm gonna put my blush on and I'm gonna put just the amount I want so that way I don't have to tweak it or add more or anything. I can control it. I'm all about control with my makeup, you can tell. Okay, as soon as I've perfected, I try not to blink too much and then I <laughs> set with powder. So our creams don't set, but there are certain areas of our face that never stop moving. And for me, that's usually my mouth because I don't stop talking. So my smile lines and my eyes never stop blinking. So around my eyes, I tend to crease there. Even if I use the smallest amount of product ever, again, our creams can migrate to those fine lines. If you are over applying, not using your perfector or not setting the makeup. I use my perfector pretty heavily um, and I could still get very minimal around my eyes and I could just pat them out throughout the day, but I tend to just want to set it and forget it. Just, I don't wanna have to think about it. So I use our vanilla dust. All I do is I touch the powder brush to the vanilla dust so that I get a very minimal amount. It's a very finely milled powder and this is just enough for my entire under eye and I don't have to worry about it. So then I usually bring it down my nose and down my small line and I'm good to go. Same thing for this side. Okay, if you have any extra, I tend to get a little shiny right there. And then I also set my eyes so I have a nice base ready to go for eyeshadow. Okay, so I didn't put powder anywhere I'm applying blush. That is the key. We don't wanna get any type of cakiness, right? Okay, I'm dying to try this shade. I have not swatched it at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch it. We're gonna do some comparisons so that way I know exactly what to expect before I apply it to my face, meaning I will kind of have an idea whether I need to swatch in a lot or a little and all the things. Sometimes you'll touch one of our creams and you'll be like, whoa, that's pigmented. This is a semi-gloss, so I know from what I know with our lip and cheeks, it's not gonna be a super pigmented blush. Our semi-gloss tend to be more on the sheer side. So 
and it's it's pretty light so I know I'm gonna have to apply more in order to see it okay so it feels glossy sometimes it has a little bit of a film on the top depending on the lip and cheek so I usually always try to kind of get down to the goods a little bit so I kind of use the warmth of my finger to warm it up and I'm gonna get off all that I don't know weird layer that happened when it melted in shipping okay so let's do this see I told you guys it would be sheer but it's beautiful so let's build it up here so you guys can see and see what we can compare it to it is so pretty so you guys know I love me some natural blush this is going to be like the perfect natural peachy shade and I find peach to be a very natural looking color and I love the color if you can't tell I wear it a lot okay so that's it built up let's go ahead and get Frenchie out because I know that is going to be something I want to compare it to first of all Frenchie is not the same formulation okay at all this is wallflower. I <laughs> just went blank. This is Frenchie. Okay, so here it looks darker, but again, it's sheer. It's not going to look the same. So Frenchie is actually, in my opinion, one of our creamiest blushes, um, but it is very matte. Do you see how now it, it, this one looks darker than this? Okay, this is why the, the swatches are so deceiving. Okay, now because it's matte, it's got more pigmentation. It's just most of our mattes are more pigmented. Okay, so if you are wanting um, Frenchie in a glowy version, I honestly, and if you want a lot of color payoff, say you're a little bit darker or darker complected than me, I would recommend putting Frenchie down as a base gonna give you the pigment a lot of staying power with that matte shade and then I would top it with wallflower and that's going to not change the color at all but just add that glow it's gonna allow you to also get um, the color without ever feeling sticky or tacky because if you're darker and you have to use a lot I don't know if you saw how much I had to swatch on my hand if you have to use a lot of any gloss or semi-gloss you're going to be a lot more likely to feel that tackiness on your cheeks whereas this doesn't have any tackiness it's matte okay so this would be a perfect combo for you to get that look and then get that glow like that's what i would do personally i have a feeling i'm going to like this by itself because it's going to look really beautiful and like a natural inner peachy glow which i love but if I was wanting more color, that's what I would do. Okay. So that is the only matte that is any, nope, I lied. Nope, not the only matte that's anywhere close. Uh, I forgot. This is a newer shade, if I can get it out. Never throw out your tin lids. That's what they're there for. Pop that baby out. This is Saint Tropez. So let's see, maybe this one is closer than I thought it would be. So maybe it's closer to this one than Frenchie. I would say here's Saint Tropez, here is Wallflower. Uh, this one definitely is lighter and pulls lighter. Now this is a matte similar to Frenchie. So we got Frenchie, Saint Tropez, Wallflower. Can you kind of see that? They look very similar they're all pretty I honestly feel like Frenchie is a little bit more neutral on its own a little bit more nude tone uh, definitely Saint Tropez is the brightest um, wallflower is kind of in between the two okay other ones I was curious of comparing them to off the top of my head was of course Tropicana now Tropicana is one one of our first semi glosses. Now I feel like after a while I can get a lot more pigment. I don't know what it is like this one. 
I have been using for a while and I get a lot more pigment than when I first used it. Again, this is why I was trying to kind of dig in. Sometimes that top layer is deceiving, like Sadie. I remember Sadie for the longest time, which is a gloss, I was trying to get, and I couldn't get any color payoff. And then it's like, after a while, I'm like, whoa, I really love this shade. And it was showing up. I think it was just that top layer. So don't be scared to dig in, right? So here's Tropicana. Okay. Now Tropicana, I would say, I've always described this as a coral color. It's a little bit brighter and has more pink in it. Can you see that? Um, I have some people that say that this looks orange on them. So I would say this definitely is a lot less orange than Tropicana in my opinion. Okay. I also wanted to compare it to Boardwalk and Desert Sunset. So these are two glosses. So Tropicana is the same formulation. Um, Boardwalk is also a rather newer shade. Let's see. And I feel like they look real similar. I've always described Boardwalk as like a nude peachy undertone. Um, so let's see. Boardwalk. Okay, do you see how much more nude it is? It actually compared to the rest of these, looks like it has more pink in it. It totally does. And I've never thought of Boardwalk as a pink. Thought it as a nude, but it totally looks pink in comparison to these. Okay, so let's try Desert Sunset, which I've always found Desert Sunset to be very similar to Boardwalk. So here's Wallflower, here's Desert Sunset, here's Boardwalk so similar. Let's try them next to each other. Desert Sunset. Again, a little bit darker than Boardwalk. Again, more nude, more pink in it. You see that? I'm trying to think if there's anything even close. Cindy is a lot more pink. Okay, but just because I'm going to get asked. Venice is a lot more coral and bright. Um, La Cienega has that gold shimmer. A lot more pink. Here's Tangerine, which is our new fruit punch. Now this one is very sheer. I mean, they look nothing like each other in the 10, obviously, because it looks straight up orange, but it's not super pretty. Okay, and then last but not least, let's go ahead and put it next to Ibiza. Ibiza, is that what somebody told me? Ibiza, I'm pretty sure. Ibiza, Ibiza, did I say that right? Somebody actually sent me a voice memo. You guys are amazing and I love you. Um, and I still probably butchered it, but I can try. You know, I mean, you can't even tell that I took Spanish. I did, I promise. It was just a long, long time ago. Okay, so here is Ibiza, um, which, let's put it up here, is definitely a nudie pink. Okay, let's see if I can get any more of this wallflower to swatch. I feel like I need to use this a little bit. Don't be afraid to warm her up. There you go, you can see it better. All right, so Ibiza, wallflower, Frenchie, Saint Tropez. Oh, what do we do next? That was Tropicana. Boardwalk, Desert Sunset, um, that was Cindy, Venice, La Cienega, and Tangerine. Okay, so you can see. I've tried to show all the peachy shades. Uh, did I forget any? Hollywood is a lot more pink and matte, but some people really compare that to Frenchie, so it's actually not as far off as I thought. 
Hmm. But I would definitely say it's more of a pink than peach. And then last but not least, let's go ahead and do Madrid. So you guys can see that too. Okay, so there you go. There's our lineup. I think that's all the closest shades. So pretty. I mean, there are definitely multiple shades I think would work really well under this if you wanted more pigment. If you are fairer than me, I don't think you're going to have a problem wearing this on its own. It might just be depending on your lips. So I'm going to try it on my lips with nothing else, but um, I know I personally, probably because of my undertone, I'm not going to probably be able to wear it super heavy on my lips to where it looks me, makes me look lighter or it will wash me out. I, I just know that these colors tend to do that, like Saint Tropez, for example, uh, this one washes me out. So we're gonna try it. Let's see what it looks like. If you're darker than me, um, I'd say you probably, Madrid would probably be really pretty as like a base to then put this over. Like that would be a gorgeous combination. Okay, I know it's sheer, so I'm going to kind of load up a little, a little bit, a lot, <laughs> a lot more than normal. And then I'm gonna go to the outside app on my cheeks and just kind of press that on. Now the good thing about, I actually prefer the sheer shades because I feel like I can control them more. Like I can load up the brush, I can apply, and then I can just keep building up color. Whereas those really pigmented shades, I feel like I barely can apply any and I have to be careful because if I get too much in one spot, then I have to work to blend. And with all of my hyperpigmentation and whatnot that I just tried to cover, it makes it hard for me to blend it out because I don't want to move my color corrector around. So I like these colors I can build up. I feel like I can wear them really sheer or really build them up for more color and more pigment, depending on my mood. See, and I really like this. I feel like it looks like I'm wearing blush, but it looks natural and glowy. And it's that beautiful peachy shade. Like I've been waiting for them to make a glowy version of Frenchie for a long time. Now I love Tropicana. I have to apply a lot less of Tropicana and it does pull more um, like orangey on me. But shoot, you could even use a little bit of tangerine with this and get that same look. Like there's multiple ways you could get that, but I love this one. Okay, so far so good. Now let's try a little bit on the lips. I'm gonna go ahead, mm, I'm gonna put a little bit of solstice on my lips. Now, Frenchie on my lips makes me look dead because it's light and drying. I feel like that, that shade, so this shade, for some reason, makes my lips look so dry. <laughs> um, more so than any other matte lip and cheek we have. So, I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna go ahead and use our Suede, which is our new lip liner. And I'm gonna line my lips and then I'm going to see how much of that shade I can apply. So, our new suede lip liner, I really like the color because it's natural. I feel like it's going to work on any skin tone, but it is lighter than what I'm used to wearing, which is my contour color. So, sometimes my trick with using a shade too light for my lips is using a darker contour to line my lips. So, I'm curious to see what this is going to look like with an even lighter shade. It's going to look probably more natural. So, I'm just going to go ahead and Oh, I'm pleasantly surprised. That doesn't make me look washed out like I thought it would. I like it. <laughs> it's a very peachy nude, obviously, but 
I like it and I don't feel like I need to top it. I mean, it's a subtle lip, but with the eyeshadow I have planned, that's what I wanted was a subtle lip so I can go more bold on the eyes. And I really like that color. I mean, that's super pretty. I would definitely wear that by itself, which I didn't know if I could. So I'm happy with that. The only thing that can maybe make this better is to top it with Sunshine State, but I won't do it because not everybody has it. But I'm just telling you, if you have both of those, I bet that's a killer combination. Just saying, you guys, I try not to put it in my palette, but it would be so pretty over that. Okay, I'll shut up. Uh, what's next? I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows and I'll be right back so we can do a little eyeshadow. Okay, friends, I'm back. I went ahead and added Angel Illuminator and I did one eye and my eyebrows. I was experimenting and I'm still debating if I need eyeliner or not, but for now, I wanna, go, I wanna show you guys this look. Now, this is inspired from years ago where I did a similar eye look. If I can find it, I'll drop a picture of it. But if you guys are OGs and have been wearing Saint for a while, you might remember our last website, there was a picture um, of a beautiful model and she had beautiful eyeshadow on. It didn't look like any colors we had. I have no idea what colors and I think they at one point told us and I was like, it doesn't even look like those colors. But I recreated the look for what I thought it looked like and I wanna kind of do a spin on that for a more dramatic eye look that I feel like is in the peachy family, a little bit more dramatic, looks really good with a natural looking lip and cheek for a night out, okay? I have nowhere to go tonight, okay. but I'm going to play anyway. And it's some of my very favorite shades that I feel like I don't wear as much. So let me show you guys what I did and also some other shades that you could get the same look from because some of these shades are new since I've done that previous look. And so the original look I wanna show you, I used these shades. So I used Bubba, of course. I'm gonna to try to swatch these over here. Okay, I used Bubba, Zion, Gilded, believe it or not. This is actually where my love for this shade started. Tawanda. Okay. This is what started my, my rabbit hole of using Tawanda over everything. Okay, so this is the original four shades I did. And I'll show you where I placed these and then how I did it a little bit differently with this eye look. So you could also start with Bubba in the crease, but another good option would be Butterscotch. Um, so if you compare them, Butterscotch is a little, a little more towards the warmer side and a little bit darker. Let's watch these next two. So let's start. I'm gonna go ahead and just use this as like my base. Normally how I always start is I go in with something to carve out my crease, give my eyes some shape, and to kind of make my hood look less hooded. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip over and use that along the entire lower lash line. Ooh, I got a little bit much, so that's okay. Flip back over and blend. Okay, and then we're, we might not be done with that shade, but that's how I start. Okay, so another, a couple of shades that are also very similar would be Zion, and then since then we got Holly. So Holly is similar to Zion. It's just a little bit darker, a little bit more red, I would say. Um, in my opinion, that just means you apply less of it and get a very similar color. So you can tell these are just a little bit, these two are a little bit, darker than these two. I just kind of used the side of my eyeshadow brush and did a really light 
wash, and this is a pretty dark color, okay? And I normally probably wouldn't cl classify this as a lid shade, but for this type of dramatic look, this is like a base, okay? So those rules don't apply when we're doing things like smoky eyes, okay? Okay, so I'm just doing a light, okay? Light wash all over the lid, okay? I look a little crazy so far. That was Holly. And just a heads up, this eyeshadow look would be impossible without the eyeshadow switcher, the brush cleaning tool, because I'm using it a lot. So unless you wanna wash your brushes in between, or if you have multiple brushes, I guess that would work too. Okay, so then I went in with Gilded. Again, I did use this shade again. There's nothing quite like this color, in my opinion. It's like a burgundy shimmer. It's so pretty. But it can be difficult to wear. Um, you can use it in the outside corner, but sometimes it doesn't show up as deep enough. And it kind of just depends. Sometimes um, I feel like it is a little dark to put on your lid. So... I do use it along the lash line a lot or an outside corner, but for this method, I am using it on the lid, but I'm gonna use very little of it. And you'll see when you use it like this and you already have that base of holly down for pigment, this you're mainly just using for that kind of shimmer that it adds to the eye since this one obviously is matte. Now for any kind of deep, dark, dramatic look, I'll be honest, I don't do any of them unless I have my magic eraser shade because the darker you go with your shadows, the harder it is to really blur edges and blend. So I'm always utilizing like mine, like chai to kind of keep my edges blurred out and use to blend as needed. I don't always mention that I use it, but I almost always use it when I'm using darker colors. At this point, I feel like I've lost some of my, this color, and so I'm always kind of tweaking as I go, use, utilizing that hood shade, the number four shade um, it, along my hood area. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit more to make sure that that's not getting lost. You can even go in with um, Holly into the crease more here for depth and then just utilize this color up over that so you can see that. Now another good shade for that which scares some people is Tangerine, okay? I used to be really scared of Leo because it looked orange and this one's even brighter and I love this shade. <laughs> um, because sometimes when I look at my eye and I'm like, eh, it just needs a little bit of a pop. I use so very little, but I just will pop it right there. Can you see that difference? Have, it, it will brighten your eye. So don't be scared of orange eyeshadow. I used to be very scared of it, but now I use it a lot. So in comparison, this is butternut with butternut. <laughs> butternut. <laughs> Butter, butterscotch, why am I calling it butternut? Um, butterscotch, and this is tangerine. It's just made me realize now we have a lip and cheek called tangerine. That's kind of confusing, that's okay. Um, tangerine eyeshadow. So some people feel like this looks orange. Put it next to this, doesn't look so orange. But this one is much more neutral and it works really well when you need a lot of it, especially when you're blending out an entire crease. I like to use the pop color very sparingly. And then again, back into chai when I get a little too crazy and need to blend. Okay, here comes the magic. Can you tell the difference of how dark and closed off? Now this is a look and it's beautiful, but it is much more of a smoky eye dramatic look with a lot of color and most people stick to more neutral shades with smoky eyes so i do like this 
but I tend to, my eyes are small by themselves, much less when I wear dark eyeshadows. So I always try to give that pop of light. Do you see that pop of light I added to the lid? Yep, you guessed it, Tawanda, okay? Now this is the color that looks straight up pink, but use a clean eyeshadow brush and use the side and look at that. It looks even more rose gold over dark shades than it does over really like over by, well, over just your lid color or by itself. Okay, so that is how I kind of give that sheen, that gold, rose gold, without using a shade like Angel's Landing, which tends to just look like glitter on my eyes, um, and it will show a lot more texture. This is more finely milled gold. It is my fave. So then to kind of finish it up, you can even, even just stick to Gilded um, in the smudge brush or even go into... I used a little bit of my Revival, which is my favorite deep dark, whoops, I kind of swatched those over each other, um, deep dark shades for outer corner or liner. So I did not do liner on this side, but can you see how kind of looks like I do? It looks like I have outside corner liner and all that. Um, all I did was applied Revival to my outside corner and a little bit in the crease because I have this kind of dead spot right here. You see that? Where I feel like I need depth, okay? I wanna push that back so it's not so visible. So I'm just gonna kind of tap into that Revival. Gilded can do this a similar thing. It's just not gonna be quite as deep because it's got more shimmer and it will reflect more light. Gonna mimic what I did up here on my lower lash line. So that means I'm going to use, um, but <laughs> mine still have the old names, which is what I keep calling it, butternut, butterscotch under, which I already did once, I forgot, underneath the entire lash line. Then I'm gonna do Holly. That one I can remember because it didn't change names. And I'm gonna blend those out and then I'm going to use the multitasker in either Gilded or Revival to just do that outside corner. And that's what gives the appearance that I lined my eyes when in fact, I didn't. It just gives me a really smoked out dramatic look with those darker shades all over the lid. And then if you're not seeing that pop, I totally recommend Tangerine way up here above the hood to add some of that warmth and it ties in so beautifully with that lip and cheek. And then of course, you guys know me, last but not least, a little bit of a brightener on that inside corner and under the brow. Okay, friends, there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and set now that I have a big crease in my hair from that clip. <laughs> Here it is with no liner, just a little lower lash mascara. Guys, I'm loving these shades. I feel like they're super sh summery, but I'm gonna wear this color year round for sure. And what do you guys think about a little bit more of a dramatic eye? Very different way of applying than I normally show. Um, I definitely don't consider it a daytime look, but it is super pretty for a little glam night or a date night or to switch things up a little bit. I hope the swatches were helpful in comparison for our new wallflower. If you want to check that out before it sells out or August 30. First. As always, if you need help with your 3D foundation, I am happy to. My color mesh request is in the drop box below the video. Click that. Let me know how you like to wear your makeup so I can be very detailed and customized for your match. I want to make sure everybody gets exactly what they want from their makeup so they love it as much as I do. And as always, if you need eyeshadow recs, I'm here to help as well. I can send you swatches or all the things, anything that will help you 
choose your perfect shades to build your palette. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Love you.